I read so many comments on social media in response to many of my observations about the workplace. I'm acknowledging what I and many others have experienced in an effort to analyze the root causes of those dynamics. I have over 30 years of experience in the corporate world and realize that whether you work in corporate, the education, government, nonprofit, or other sectors, much of what I write about is occurring. But here's the thing. I'm not writing to blame, criticize, or disparage certain companies or individuals, but to urge each one of us to become activists for unity and positive change. The change our entire civilization needs now. Hi, I'm Jenny Clark, a conscious leadership expert who spent two decades in executive recruiting and talent management. Having worked with giants like Google, Spencer Stewart, I discovered that the secret to transformative leadership lies in the five dimensions of conscious leadership. And I'm here to help you unlock your full potential. Join me on this channel as we embark on an honest and vulnerable journey together to become the kind of leader that genuinely inspires organizational transformation. I have a few ways you can get involved in this conscious community. First, I've created a free career map to help you uncover your next career move. Second, I've created exclusive content for you with a community of like-minded leaders. And lastly, I send out a free newsletter every week. To learn more, check out the description of this video. So in some recent social media comments, someone said, institutions need to mandate good behavior. And to that I ask, how's that been working out? Institutions are merely entities established to rather arbitrarily contain people who make decisions and have been empowered or authorized to do so by some other entity, which is often called government or shareholders. These people are making decisions that are too often in their own self-interest. There is a way to make decisions that serve the many, if not all. Let us be the ones to find those solutions and decide to create new structures that leverage our individual and collective capabilities and desires. As a black girl, my parents always taught me to hold my head high, that I was smart and good enough, worthy. I believed it until I was challenged in my day-to-day -day life. I was called the N-word as a second grader at my nearly all-white elementary school in Southern California. As I got older, my parents also told me that I'd have to achieve twice as much to get half as far. Indeed, I experienced discrimination and bigotry once in the workplace, even after going to respected universities. Now, I could easily be disappointed, angry, even bitter that I wasn't always treated the same as my mostly white male peers. I could also question myself based on the not-so-subtle messaging that suggested black people and other minorities were inherently not as smart or qualified. I witnessed and experienced what George Bush called in a speech, the soft bigotry of low expectations. The reference was directed at education where teachers were not expecting disadvantaged people or minorities to meet the same standard of behavior or achievement set for most people. But I knew it applied to employers in all sectors, all ages, it still does. Yes, the overt and subliminal messages of inferiority were powerful, and I know I and many other women and people of color succumb to them, then and now, to varying degrees. It can show up as questioning how good you are when some of your peers are overconfident because of privilege and they might achieve greater heights because there really isn't a meritocracy in most organizations. Nepotism, favoritism, and yes, racism and sexism influence who gets hired and promoted, still. It can show up for us as lowering our expectations for promotion and ascending the ranks, not because we aren't good enough, but because the additional toll it would take to achieve it. If we did achieve it, the toll would indeed be great. I was disenchanted with what I was seeing in so many systems that had been constructed centuries ago to manage even control the masses or to the enrich the lives of some, but not all. I decided a long time ago to learn to deepen my awareness of myself in the context of the universe. In my spiritual quest, I learned about unity consciousness. It's a simple concept that starts with acknowledging that we are all one. Any separation from God or whatever greater power you might believe in is an illusion. We're all connected. Practically, there are some people I'd rather not be associated with. And let's try to rise above that. 
And mind you, this doesn't mean that I was or am going to tolerate mistreatment, inequities, or other behaviors intentionally thrust upon me, not for a minute, but it did and does mean that I have other choices that I can make. I'm not a victim nor helpless. As part of a whole, I have power, a responsibility even to affect change from wherever I am in my own way. So here are five lessons to get you to activate your power through unity consciousness and affect positive change for all. Speak up against divisiveness. Don't remain silent when you witness divisive or toxic behavior. Speak up respectfully, you've heard me say this before, and assertively to address such issues, whether at work or in your social circles. Lead by example. Be a role model for unity. Unity is not conformity or assimilation. It is about finding common ground and respecting difference. Demonstrate through your actions and interactions what it means to embrace difference and work together harmoniously. Engage in dialogue, in constructive dialogue with those who hold different views. Seek common ground and find areas of agreement to build bridges. Isn't it time? Model change. Use your voice and influence to advocate for policies and practices that promote equality, diversity, and inclusion, both in your workspace and in society. Empathy and understanding. Develop empathy by seeking to understand the perspective and experiences of others, especially those with different backgrounds and beliefs. Empathy is a cornerstone of unity. Here's what I want you to take away. Shifting your perspective to become an activist for unity and fostering inclusion is a noble and useful endeavor. It involves a mindset shift and taking intentional actions to promote positive change. Begin with self-reflection and examine your own beliefs biases, and behaviors. Acknowledge areas where you might have contributed to divisiveness unintentionally. Your commitment to being an activist for unity can have a ripple effect, inspiring others to join the cause and contributing to a more inclusive and harmonious world. In the words of Albert Einstein, if I were to remain silent, I'd be guilty of complicity. I know firsthand how taking that first step can be the catalyst for a life-changing transformation. I remember the moment I decided to harness my own strengths and it made all the difference in my career. That's why I've created a career mapping tool just for you to help you uncover your unique competencies and leverage them to design your own career map. Take the first step towards your next level by clicking the link in the video description. And let's start this incredible journey together.